Stop it, what's going on? How the fuck are ya? Today we're doing a quick question of the day. How do I invest? That's, that was the question, how do I invest? Now, this is Snapchat, so this lesson is not going to be comprehensive. There's a little bit that goes into it, right? But I do want to paint a picture. I want to give some very generalized philosophies to sort of teach people what the fuck's going on. No, not many people know about this stuff, right? But because this isn't the time or place to go into a great amount of detail, it, hopefully you will send me through some follow-up questions after I cover the, the very basics. Here we go, this is the spectrum. Investing's down this end, and it's a sliding scale upwards toward speculating. Speculating, investing. In terms of your time input, down this end, you're looking at more passive investments. Up this end, it's more active. It takes a lot longer to be an active speculator. In the terms of terminology that we use in the industry, down this end, we're talking about more in terms of buy and hold. Up this end, we're talking about trading. When you, whenever you hear me talk about trading, it's this end. In terms of profit potential, we're talking down this end, it's lower. Up this end is higher. Profit potential is higher. But when you factor in difficulty, this is quite easy. This is quite difficult. Much higher level of difficulty. In terms of leverage, down this end, we have low to no leverage at all. Then we move into CFDs, derivatives, options, and then we end up in Forex, so we got high degrees of leverage. In terms of scalability, passive investing actually has a much higher degree of scalability than active speculation Forex trading. You don't hear of multi-billion dollar Forex funds. In terms of turnover, lower, higher. There's a lot, of, lot more turnover when you're an active speculator than there is if you're a passive buy and hold investor. I hope this is making sense. If you could think about investing and speculating in terms of taking drugs, your investing would be a morning coffee. Your active speculation would be like taking crystal meth. Career choice. We're talking accountant, prostitute. I hope you're getting the, hope you're getting the difference here. Yeah. The biggest mistake that people make that I see very often, people, most people make this mistake, is they actually don't know where they truthfully sit in the spectrum. There are many speculators who think they're investors, who think they're investing. They're not fucking investing, they're speculating. Often, they're even beyond speculating. They're just straight up gambling and they think that they're investors. They think that they're growing their wealth, purely gambling. So, step one, you wanna know exactly where you fit and you wanna be intentional. The second biggest mistake everyone body well seems to make is they start out too far over this side with no savings, no investment philosophy, no nothing. They just straight up speculating. And when you combine the first two mistakes, you get the situation that everyone fucking seems to face online in the trading and investing community. They start speculating with no idea what they're doing. So that you here know on Snapchat, if you're taking a stock tip, a hot stock, that is pure speculating. You're speculating on the direction of that stock. Here's my advice on stock tips. Never take them. Never act on a stock tip. That's the craziest shit. If you lose money, you've got no accountability, no, no lesson to learn. And if you make money, it's not fucking repeatable. You, you got the stock tip from someone else who did the research. It's not repeatable. That, why, why the fuck would you want that? It's probably because you're trying to get rich quick. Lesson three, if you're miserable with your life and you're a little bit unfulfilled and your feet aren't firmly planted on the ground, you're infatuated with getting rich quick and you're going in to speculate, don't. Especially don't speculate with leverage if you're, if you're that way inclined. Don't, don't use leverage, don't, use, don't go into setting up a margin account. Fuck that, you'll lose. My advice is to get the income that you're currently making and every single week or fortnight, save a little bit, 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 save a little bit. build a kitty. If you're self-teaching, start down this end. If you're getting a mentor, if you're learning how to do things properly, you can move a little bit along the line, but don't ever go too far that way. We have a rule in Infinite Prosperity. Never become a pure speculator. Even if you're at the top of the field, killing the game, doing things properly, have an investment portfolio and cash buffers. Having a passive investment portfolio and cash buffers helps to stabilize and neutralize your emotional volatility. If you're an emotional bear, limit it to here. Don't go any further to the right. Every single day here on Snapchat, I'll get a message from someone who's completely irrationally, emotionally volatile and in resentment, usually because something's happened badly in their life. And as a means to dissociate from their pain, they want to get rich quick and they want to become a pure speculator in the shortest possible period of time. And I say, no way. Sometimes I say the language that you're using right now is a little bit cray cray. And if you become a pure speculator, you will get your ass hosed. And I suggest instead, Go over here and buy some index funds. Save, 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 create a kitty, buy some index funds. Lesson four, S&P 500 index funds. They are phenomenally 
powerful, the masses don't talk about them because they're not exciting. The S&P 500 is a collection of the top 500 companies in America based on market cap. Means the biggest 500 fucking companies producing products and services at serving billions. These 500 companies are run by the brightest entrepreneurs, the most savvy business people on the planet. And to get into the 500, a board of directors of the brightest financial minds on earth get together and say, these bottom few are not performing, kick them off, and these new up and coming companies are coming in, let's put them into the 500. The S&P 500 is the best companies on the planet. And there are many index funds that exist which allow you to buy the whole entire market with one investment. You buy an index fund, you get access to them all. You get all of them. Here's one you wanna look up, Vanguard 500 Index Fund. This is the investor class. The code is VFINX. This is personally my favorite S&P 500 index fund. Right here, your expense ratio is 0.16%. That means for every 100,000 US dollars you invest, it'll cost you around about 160 bucks. You can go through here and look at all the historical performance, the top 10 holdings, Apple's the biggest holding, which is uh, weighted at 3.28%. You can look at their returns per year since inception. This here motherfucker is 10.98% 10 10 per year since inception, which is in 1976 this one came on. Now, in the world of professional speculation, 10.98% per annum is not much, but given how easy it is to invest in an index fund like this and how small the expense ratio is, and how few people do it or know about it, this is, this is untapped gold. There's, no one knows about this stuff. I went to the fucking bank the other day and right there on the window, they're advertising. They fucking got a graphic designer to advertise an ad saying 2.5% per annum in a term deposit. Fucking 2.5%, are you kidding me? Holy shit. Inflation's 4.5%. You're literally putting your money into a fund that you're guaranteed to lose. And everyone's queuing up for it. You've gotta be fucking kidding. S&P 500 index fund. If you don't do anything else, if you don't want to learn to become a speculator, at least buy an index fund. Or if you're learning to speculate and you're not getting the results that you want, gradually shift more and more capital back to investing until your results catch up, until your speculative returns catch up. And to dynamically shift capital from investing into trading, from trading into investing, depending on your results, is what we teach in the New Infinite Prosperity Lesson Stage 2 Financial Independence. Read it means, where's my fucking paper? It means if you're purely speculating and you suck at it, you gradually, you're gonna move more and more capital over to investing and long term, you'll be fine. It means if you're pretty good at speculating, you'll have an even split between investing and trading and you'll do really well from that. And it means if you're haul and ass at speculating, then you'll gradually have more and more capital build up in your speculative account, but you'll still have investments ticking on passively in the background as well. You'll do well. So it doesn't matter how you go in speculating, as long as you have your wits about you, you've got your brain turned on, you've got your feet firmly planted on the ground, you follow the systems, the strategies, the guidelines, you do all right. And finally, to neutralize the volatility of an index fund, because even an index fund that's gone up 11% per year since 1976, it's still subject to volatility. You can neutralize that. You wanna do a little bit of wise diversification. We teach five dimensions of diversification. It's in infinite prosperity. Go read the course, go do the course, go do the thing, turn your brain on, love ya. Snapchat, good morning, what's going on? Follow up question. Thanks for all the feedback about the investing lesson yesterday. You guys really like this one. I can do, I can do more of this, let me know about it. I mean, teaching money is still my bread and butter. That's still my thing, my teaching money, but I'm trying to move more and more away from it to teach the more universal concepts. That's what I'm more inspired to learn about and teach about at the moment. But my background is investing and trading, money. I teach money, I do money, I learn money, I make money, I teach money. Okay, the follow up question was this, 11%. 11% sounds really cool, given how easy it is to do, but it's ridiculous. I'm never gonna get financially independent. How long will it take me to actually live off that? That's a really good question. It can be calculated using my financial independence calculator. You type in the things, it spits out the things. So I'll show you one outcome. I'll show you one outcome. So I'm typing in date of birth based on uh, someone who's 20 years old, someone who's making $1,000 a week. This is based on a 10% savings, meaning if you make a thousand a week, you're saving a hundred bucks a week. Does it make sense? Accelerated savings means every three months you turn that savings figure up. You don't always save 10%, eventually you wanna save more and more and more. 
in infinite prosperity i talk about the psychology behind why you might want to do that you might want to do that to stretch yourself to push yourself because as you do you will dramatically reduce the time to financial independence and when you do it'll look like this it'll start at 10 and it will stair step up as you start making more as your income rises through inflation over time and distance your savings goes up now inflation i'm putting at four percent but i'm also going to assume your income is going to go up as well because incomes do we make more now than we did in 1950 right then here, I'm going to assume you have no savings. You have zero dollars savings to your name. I'm going to say you're going to start investing when you hit 10,000 and your passive returns, 11. Actually, fuck that. We'll make it nine. We'd be conservative. Better to be conservative and then get a surprise when you do it a little quicker. This is what the results spit out. You will reach income replacement, which I refer to as minimum financial independence stage two. In March 2036, 19 years from now, you'll be 38 years old. That means in 19 years from now, when you're 38 years old, you'll make exactly the same amount of income you make now, but adjusted for inflation, it'll be a little bit more through passive investing. It means save 10% of your income and you don't work when you're in your 40s. Anyone who's working at a job because they're not financially independent in their 40s really didn't think things through too well. They, they didn't spend seven seconds doing a financial independence calculation and planning their life. That's crazy. Please get this, understand this. You should not be working in your 40s if you elementary shit. Index funds, 10% savings. Now, because some of you motherfuckers don't want to wait 19 years to become financially independent, there's two things that I'll share that are really going to re really put a turbocharger on that. Number one, income. Increasing your income. Increasing your income rapidly. Remember how I do those videos and I talk about knowledge, income, equity? Income's the next thing. Boost that motherfucker. And you can do that in an infinite variety of ways. Think positive sum to start with. If you haven't got the capital yet, if you're starting out, think positive sum, meaning create a product or a service, serve people. If you can break the job mold, the job mold, I'm gonna get a job and make a thousand a week and then I'm gonna climb the fucking corporate ladder and get little piss ant promotions, that's fucking slow. But if you can turn your income up, even just to start in your 20s, if you can increase your income by 30% per year, you're done and dusted by 26, you're out. This is what 30% income growth looks like. You're making 50,000, you turn it into 65 in one year. In two years, 84, then 109. By six years, it's only 185. I don't know if that's a lot, if that sounds like a lot, but in six years, you can get to 185 from 50. It's only 30% growth. Go and serve more people, reach more people. Six years ago, I was making $520 a week. That's, uh, what the fuck's that per year? Not much. It's, I've done more than 30% growth myself. And the second big thing that I want to share to throw a rocket booster on that run to financial independence is to increase your returns. Let me show you what that looks like. In Infinite Prosperity, you'll learn about having an IT ratio. Investing, trading, ratio. One to one's reasonably conservative. That means 50% is in passive investing, which I showed you yesterday. One individual index fund that pops 11% per annum since 1976, but we're using nine to be conservative. Over here, 50% of your capital is in FX. And for this, we're using a figure of 30% per annum. This is a good return, a very strong return. If you're doing this, you're doing very well. Our top students are doing a little more. If you're following Benny Lane, for example, our platinum mentor, he's popping around about 90% per year so far since he started in Forex. So 30 is reasonably conservative as well. 50% of the capital at 9% per annum, 50% of the capital at 30% per annum pops out 19.5% per annum. Let's look at what that looks like. Even if we go and reset that ridiculous 30% income growth and you're just general day job, thousand a week, doing the promotion thing, climbing the ladder, you're done before 30. May 2026, nine years from now, you're 28 years old, you're done and dusted. You've got income replacement, you're completely financially independent. This is reasonably conservative figures. I'm not inflating this shit. Now, if you're a mad motherfucker and you're popping 90.5% per annum and you're doing that 30% income growth, you're hustling, you're done in five years. You can get some ridiculous results in five years. This is what I did. This is my story. I did more than 19.5% per year and I did more than 30% income growth. But I hope when you see it so sort of laid out like this, you, you, you can sort of grasp it. You can see it. It's not, it's not ridiculous. It's not get rich quick. It's not too good to be true. It's working. And still, so many people online tell me I can't do what I'm doing. It's not real or what I'm doing is not. This is fucking ignorant. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't have my brain. Um, can I show you an algorithm I invented of this as well, 30%? This is what this looks like, by the way, for the speculators out there. That looks like 50% strike rate, which means you're wrong half the time. 
50% strike rate, but you need a decent reward risk. This is just two to one, which means your winners on average are twice as big as your losers on average. Just five trades per month, that's it. We're talking about average pip risk of 40 with a two spread, which is a little bit more now that we've moved away from FXCM, but the ballpark, that's 2.25% uh, per month. 2.25% per month is exactly 30.6% compounded annually. That's your, that's your 30%. So for speculators out there who want to do the 30%, keep it real, do the numbers. It's not as crazy as you might think. You can get it wrong half the time, right? But as always, you bring your ego into the market, you bring your emotion into the market, and you want to fight the market and never lose. I don't want to ever take a loss. You fucking lose. You get beaten if you're emotional. So in summary, you can be a speculator. You can get it wrong half the time. You can take five trades per month, which doesn't take a whole lot of time. You can save 10% of your income and you're financially independent before 30. And here's the million dollar question. How many of you guys here on Snapchat watching this are actually gonna do it? History would tell me not very many.